Physical exercise and diet are important in keeping your body healthy and in optimal shape. The same goes for your mind. On this episode, we're going to be learning the importance of a mindful diet and what that consists of. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join a conversation in a more meaningful and deeper way, you can join our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with the disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today, we're going to interview Jesse Strawham, a life coach and motivational speaker that draws upon her own personal experiences as someone with a spinal cord injury to help others in transition to find the opportunities in their obstacles. Jesse, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited because I love the personal development space and I know um, that you're there now, but that's not where your journey started. So let's back up and give our audience a chance to get to know who Jesse is. So if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, that would be awesome. Uh, I was paralyzed in a motorcycle accident in 2015 Mm -hmm. and I got you know, I lived my whole life, I was 22 years old, and I went my entire life able to walk, use the restroom. And so when I had my spinal cord injury, it, the not the fact that I couldn't walk, but the fact that I couldn't go to the bathroom on my own, I peed myself, um, I had a lot of accidents, and it was, it was frustrating. And so that gave me this path and this journey that's just developed into this beautiful, beautiful mindset. And I, I feel very fortunate now to get to go through this. But I, uh, I live my life to help that 22 year old girl that was unsure of what her life was going to look like. That was scared. And that's why that's my motivation. That's why I do the things that I do. That is so beautiful. Um, not a lot of people can walk away, so to speak, uh, from an accident that completely changes your life and makes and come out bigger and better. I know today we're going to talk about like the mindful diet, um, the mindful exercises that we can help keep our mind in optimum shape. But how did you get on that journey? I, I was just like every other wheelchair user at first. I did nothing but try and walk again. And I spent my first year and countless dollars on that goal with no results. So then I got into the adaptive sports realm And about two years into my injury, I was on a trip for an adaptive sports camp and I fell on the hotel room floor and being stuck on the floor (laughs) with no one there, you might have to call a stranger to come get you off. It's, it's frustrating. And as much as I would fall and not be able to get myself back up, I would get frustrated. So I decided to record my meltdown right there on the floor and post it to YouTube And it was the amount of people that viewed that, commented on it and said, me too, or I hope that it gets better. I realized the impact and power of our words. And it really made me second think the energy that I was putting out there. I'm like, wow, if I could get this with something negative, what could I get with something positive? And it completely changed my entire mindset. And now I live with this thought of if it's not productive to me or someone else or constructive, I don't, I don't put it out there. Wow. I think whether you have a disability or not, that's a good takeaway. (laughs) Like we could just stop the show right now, but, (laughs) but let's not do that. There's so much more to dig in because I feel like that 22 year old that might be lying in bed right now, um, or even someone, you know, who has lost their job or has, is in a divorce. So Loss of a loved one, loss of home, like any, that's the thing that people don't realize, you know, they look at us 
and they see our obstacles. But in reality, they have obstacles that feel just as hard as our obstacles do. And I, I really, you know, COVID has had us quarantined. And so during this quarantine, I've had a lot of time to reflect. And I find myself thinking back on my issues before I was paralyzed and how I felt that those things were the end of the world, end of all end, and this is it. And then I got paralyzed and I had that same exact feeling. And so who are we to compare our struggles to someone else's? We don't know what kind of pain that is causing them. And when you take the step back and look at it from the outside or looking in, it helps you with that perspective of, wow, I truly don't know what anyone else is going through. It could feel just as bad. You know, it probably felt just as debilitating as this feels to us in the beginning. Right, right. And so regardless of what that obstacle looks like, you know, what is it that you would say to a person that's laying in their bed right now whether it be being debilitated because they're par now paralyzed or because they're depressed, um, what would you say to them to um, help them come out bigger and better like you did? You have to look at what's upsetting you and then look at how much control you have over that situation. In reality, I, I had no control over my legs not working, my bladder not working. Um, I have no control. I can't go back in time and undo my spinal cord injury. I, I don't have a magic fix for it. So why? Why am I going to let these things that I have zero control over control my life? You know, we have the power to react to a situation in whatever way we feel fit. So rather than reacting in anger and being upset, I've decided to figure out what does this have to offer me? So look, take a step back. What is it that this life has to offer you? You can't change it. So what can you get from it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice too. Um, you, own, you produce a fitness line. You are into sports. You're athletic. You're very uh, conscious of your physical health, but it, obviously shows that you're conscious of your mind's health. Um, and so um, if we look at what does a mindful diet and exercise plan look like to keep our minds at the optimum shape, what ingredients are important? Uh, so I, I talk about the importance of documentation especially in the, you know, there's different levels of people that I've coached. And recently I've had somebody that just needed that little nudge to get to where they're going. And then I had somebody starting from the ground and working their way up and starting from the ground. It's like, what are the little things that are going to get you to that first goal? Pick a small goal, something obtainable, but something that you can also break down. And it's, it's taking those little steps to get to where you want to be. And so for my mental health, I'm constantly thinking about who do I want to be in 10 years? Who do I want to be? Where do I want to be in 10 years? What can I do today to get me to where I want to be in a year? How can I grow from this situation? What can I learn from this? And so an example is I'm helping somebody transfer independently out of their bed virtually. And, you know, it's, he's like, well, I can't, I can't get dressed. I have to wait for someone to get me out. I have to wait for somebody to help me with this and that. I'm like, okay, so what if while you're waiting, you attempt to pull your pants up and pull them back down? You know, what, what can you do now to get to that long-term goal? And it's really, when you look at it, you know, when you're looking at the big goal, it looks overwhelming. It looks unobtainable. It's something that you can't accomplish. But then when you break it down into these steps, you're like, okay, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take some time, but I will get to that destination. It is possible. And I think that's the biggest thing for anyone that's struggling with anything. I, the biggest thing that I use right now is my debt. <laughs> I have a lot of medical bills that even though I was paralyzed five years ago, I'm still paying on. I had another back surgery and I have to pay that copay. Like I have bills that are there and I'm just slowly chomping away. And now here I am a year later since I've implemented my payment plan 
I guess. And I have three of those six paid off. I'm halfway there. Wow. Wow. And it, it's huge. It's, it's hu- when you start documenting that progress, you're able to see it. And so you have to think, you have to think about these things and be intentional about documenting, document what you're doing and whatever it is you want to change on. Say you want to exercise more, document exactly what your exercise is and how long it took you. And then you want to eat better. Okay. Document diary, your meals for a week straight, see how much you're eating, when you're eating, write down the time, write down the portion size. If you want to make a change in something, but you don't know how to document it, it gives you something visual, tangible to look at and say, okay, this is where I'm at. Now I know how, what I can do, what changes, where do I need to shift? Right. And the, the thing is though, a lot of people don't want to look at the reality, right? Like, yeah, you just said that. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> if I had to document everything I ate, oh. <laughs> do, I really Same. <laughs> do I really want to look at that? You know, and that's what it, but that's what it requires. How much, how badly do you want that change? How badly do you want that goal? And sometimes when we really want a goal, it's important to have to look at our reality, which may not be so pretty and be a reflection of where we're at in our own mind at the time. So it's very telling the, the documenting. I think that's a great um, practice that anybody can start implementing today, including myself. Um, so. I have to write this. I'm like, I have to write this down real quick. And so before, before you even start setting goals, you have to get to a place with yourself that you're ready to address your flaws. The things that you don't like about you, you have to be ready to address them and to really put them, put them under a microscope and look at them deeply and see what can I change in this flaws. And typically if you don't like something about somebody else, it's because that's something that is in you that you would like to change. Exactly. Exactly. It's almost like hitting your rock bottom, right? It doesn't apply to just addicts, right? It applies to all of us. Are you at a space? I know for me, I can speak for myself. If my, if I feel like my back is against the wall and there's nowhere else for me to go, that's where I start becoming like warrior Pauline. Like I'm, I'm done. I'm just going to, I'm going to make a change. But that, ha- that will has to be there. So it's not this high in the sky, like, oh, I'd really like a million dollar business, right? It's, or I'd really like a um, fit body up there somewhere in dreamland. It takes work and um, we have to get to a place where we're willing to commit. And committing means ha- doing whatever it takes, whether we feel like it or not. Through my commitment to my, not only my physical diet, but my mental diet, I've been able to lose 30 pounds, which is for a wheelchair user, transferring that weight, pushing that weight. It's amazing. Through, I believe, I believe mental diet is key uh, it, with physical diet to my recovery. A lot of people don't realize I started paralyzed from the middle of my nipples down. I had no sensation, no core control, no movement. Now, if you look at my chair, my backrest barely covers my butt crack. Like I, I have core control. I have hip flexor. I've been able to stand a little bit. I went from being a complete injury, not being able to do anything for the first two years of my injury. I had no movement below my level of injury, no sensation to having movement, getting stronger. The sensation is getting stronger. It's like, be careful what you wish for with the pain. <laughs> but I believe 100% it's been my mental will, because, you know, I say, it's not that I'll walk again. It's, I just want to be the happiest, healthiest version of myself and whatever that looks like. And then the more I work, the more I push, the happier and healthier I'm getting. And the more my quality of life is improving because I'm getting stronger. I'm able to do more on my own. It's amazing that when I can grab something off the ground and pick it up to my lap, and then pick myself up off my legs without having to push myself with my hands. You know, it's those small tangible things. That's how you measure your progress. And we get discouraged when we don't have measured progress. So if you are working towards something and you're not documenting it in detail, document it in detail because we have to celebrate even the smallest, smallest wins 
You know, we, we are so quick to do something, accomplish something, and then hurry up on to the next task because we just, we want to get to that bigger goal. But we have got to celebrate each small thing that it took to get to that big goal because there was something learned. You know, there was something to be learned from each step. And we are so quick just to skip over that learning process because we live in that world of instant results, instant gratification. And we don't want to do that process, which I find myself that with my college degree. I'm like, oh, can I just be there already? And, you know, it's in reality, no, you have to take the steps. You have to do the small things to get to the big things because that's where your lesson is. That's where your growth is. That's where you learn. There's a, um, have you seen the movie Little Miss Sunshine with Steve Carell? No, I'm, I don't even have a TV, honestly. Oh, okay. Well, um, it's a black comedy, but there's this line in the movie that says, um, when you're happy and living life, you don't learn anything. It's through our struggles and our obstacles that when we are, tr we can truly grow. And um, even though it's not pretty, even though it's hard, um, those struggles are so important to refining our strength. And it, there's nothing that can be traded for it. There are people like you're a life coach. I um, look to help people through the media, through um, you know groups that we get on chats together um, to help them develop maybe if I am or you you are where they want to be yes look to those people look for your mentors look for the pioneers um, look for those who have gone before you but it's not a replacement for your own struggles and your own learning lessons because what is so awesome is that because you went through your struggles Jesse you are now able to be a blessing to the next 22 year old lying in that bed in the same sense though so my goal with wheel with me foundation is to build a transitional community for spinal cord injury survivors essentially to integrate them back into an independent community so the mental aspects will be taught the importance of taking care of your body will be taught stressed um, and you know i want to give people the tools to overcome some of those obstacles that we're faced with after injury. I know that's, you know, I know the obstacles are where the learning is, but there's some things that I wish that someone had told me that would have made my life just a little bit easier in the beginning of this injury. And that's my goal because I feel so many people, you know, this happens to us and we don't have that mental strength. They don't have that automatic determination gene and they need somebody to hold their hand through that stuff. Because so often people get caught up in what has happened and they don't take a step back to say, wow, this is actually an opportunity. And they're like, oh, poor me, I can't do this. My life is over and they automatically give up. And I wanna be that person to hold their hand and drag them through it. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, and we all need our champions. We all need our cheerleaders. And yes, there is important, that's why it is important to seek out whether it be a life coach or, you know, if when the Wheel With Me Foundation is able to open that um, transition place for people who are going through what you went through, it's important for them to know that they're not alone and to keep their eye on the prize. That, yes, in their struggles, they may feel defeated, but it's not forever. Um, That's the thing. People don't realize that they are never alone. You are not that special that you're the only person going through this in the world. <laughs> right, right. You're special, but not special. <laughs> yeah, you're special, but you're not that special. Like someone else is definitely dealing with this somewhere. And there's somebody that shares that same mindset that you have. You know, my best wheel friend, I met her in a woman's support group. And she gave me her address and I drove from North Carolina to Arizona by myself. Well, I have, goose, I have goosebumps thinking about that. I don't know why, but that's such a big deal. I mean, I feel like for any woman to single-handedly drive cross country by themselves is a big deal, but then you had a whole disability on top of that. That's amazing. See I've done it twice. <laughs> See what's possible guys. See what's possible. 
Oh my gosh, sky's the limit. It really is. It really is. And I know it sounds cliche, but whatever you put your mind to, you can truly have, but it starts from within. It has to start inside. Um, and we're- It's an inside job. <laughs> it is. Yes. Coin that. <laughs> It's like that, um, that cliche saying is the only disability is a, a closed mind. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's so true. It's it is. So true. They exist for a reason, guys, because they are true. There is a sense of truth to them. Um, Jesse, I want to thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with my community. I want to ask our viewer that if you're watching this right now, I want to ask you what would open up for you if you were to start your journey to personal development and what's the first, what's, what's a small step you can take to make that happen? Jesse has provided us some great takeaways. Uh, be ready to set goals, document your goals, document your recurrent reality, document the wins. It, you know, journaling, reflecting, those are all part of the process. Um, and it's a process, but it is a doable process. And so, Jesse, I want to thank you so much for being here. Are there any closing words of wisdom that you'd like to offer? I, when you're looking at yourself and others, let go of judgment. So often we, we put this judgment on others and who we think they should be we're not living their life, nor are they living ours. So don't let the judgments of others control the way that you live your life. As soon as you let go of judgment of who you think you should be as well, it's letting go of judgment as a whole in your life makes you feel less weighted. And then don't let fear stop you from starting because regardless of if you start or not, you're going to fail. If you don't start, you failed yourself because you didn't act on your goals. If you did start, you're going to fail, but you're going to learn, and then you're going to do it again, and you'll succeed eventually. Yes. Regardless, you're going to fail. Just do it. <laughs> yes, yes. Fail forward. That's, that's exactly. If you're going to fail, fail forward. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Um, I want to also remind our viewers to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to get into a more deeper and meaningful conversation with our community, you can join my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more from One Leg Up Productions, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed. Mm -hmm.